Hello, my name is Chris Harris and I'm from Allery Chemistry and welcome to this video on Group 2. So this is topic 27 for the CIE, that's the Cambridge International's specification. So if you're studying the CIE um, syllabus, then this is the perfect video for you. You've got loads of obviously, information on Group 2 for topic 27, but I've also done the full range of topics for Year 1 and Year 2 CIE Chemistry. Um, they're all available on Alloy Chemistry YouTube channel. All I ask is you hit the subscribe button just to show your support for this project. That will be absolutely fantastic. Um, also, these um, this video is made from slides that are available to um, purchase from the test shop. If you click on the link in the description box below, you'll be able to get them there. They're great to supplement your um, existing revision, um, and obviously you can print off the notes and you can you know write and add them to your file and make notes from them as well. So there's loads of information um, that's available. Just click on the link in the description box, as I say. Okay, so this is quite a, um, a very short video. In fact, compared to the other ones, obviously there's not that much content in topic 27. Um, and it kind of links in from group two from year one chemistry. Um, so you'll find there's a bit of an overlap there, which generally happens with the CIE topics. Um, so I'll try and bridge it as much as I can. But what I would urge you to do is to watch this group two video for year one first, if you're not sure on what I'm going to be talking about here. Um, but um, yeah, like I say, it's a very short one comparison, com in comparison to the other topics they, they have. So let's make a start. Um, let's have a look at the, um, uh, the first one, which is group two compounds and solubility. So effectively, this topic really just looks at some of the uh, compounds of group two and um, kind of their kind of physical properties and solubilities etc so um, and there is a little bit of a link as well with this uh, for this topic with the um, uh, the, the enthalpy um, the enthalpy topics where we talk about enthalpy and entropy etc so this is um, I'm trying to try and find it here I think it's chemical energetics I think so it's the one where we talk about enthalpy and entropy there's that many topics for CI you get kind of get lost but so there's a bit of a kind of acknowledgement to that as well so just make sure you're kind of comfortable with enthalpy values basically that's that's what I'm saying so um so yeah so group two hydroxides and um, carbonates um, they have opposite solubility as we go down the group Okay, so group two, remember in the periodic table, is obviously the second um, second group along, and it contains magnesium and calcium, strontium, barium, so these are the elements it will contain. So as a general rule, if the anion, that's the negative ion, has a double charge, such as carbonates and sulfates, they become less soluble as we go down the group. And this is because there's a decrease in the enthalpy of hydration of the metal. So again, we looked at that earlier in the um, earlier in year two, when we looked at enthalpy of hydration. So um, effectively, the as we go down the group, there's a lower enthalpy of hydration for um, for the metal. So generally, if the anion is a negative ion, um, obviously the negative ion. So an anion is a negative ion, but if it has a single charge, they become more soluble as we go down the group. And effectively, the the lattice dissociation enthalpy. So this is the the energy required to break the kind of lattice apart, the giant lattice apart, that decreases. Um, and obviously this outweighs the enthalpy change of hydration of the metal ion. So remember the enthalpy change of hydration um, is where we have energy that's effectively released when water molecules surround the ions that have been broken apart through lattice dissociation. Um, now if the energy that's released is greater then the energy that is um, needed to break the ions apart in the first place, then you're likely to have a compound that is soluble. So, for example, um, you know, you've got ions, well, you can see here that your magnesium hydroxide, which is this bit here, is sparingly soluble. Um, and that means, obviously, it takes more energy to break apart sodium hydroxide uh, to break that kind of that lattice apart than the energy formed when the water is attracted to the ions um, in the first place. However, if you go down the groups, such as barium, for example, so barium um, uh, hydroxide, this is really soluble. Obviously, the energy that's um, released when the water molecules are attracted to the ions 
are um, far greater than the energy required to break the ions in the first place. So this bit again, we've we've kind of seen this uh, seen this before in in previous topics. So you should be you really should be aware of these. Um, obviously, the enthalpy changes and enthalpy of solution. So it's topic twenty three. So that's what it is. So topic 23, when we looked at enthalpy of um, hydration, etc. So if you're not familiar with this stuff, make sure you go and have a look at topic 23 video. Okay, so let's look at decomposition. So group two carbonates and nitrates, they can decompose upon heating. So um, the carbonates break down into metal oxides and carbon dioxide. So any carbonate that you've got, if you're heating it up, you will produce carbon dioxide. Obviously, this occurs via thermal decomposition. So we've got calcium carbonate producing calcium oxide and carbon dioxide. So carbon dioxide is obviously the gas that's produced. Now, nitrates break down to also form metal oxides, but they form nitrogen dioxide instead of carbon dioxide. Um, and they also form oxygen instead um, as well. So not instead. So for example, you've got calcium nitrate here as a group two nitrate forms your oxide plus nitrogen dioxide plus oxygen. And this is thermal decomposition. So effectively we're putting heat in to break these down. So carbonates and nitrates, they become more thermally stable as we go down group two. So your carbonate and nitrate ion, it has a large electron cloud that can be distorted when it's near some group two metal ions. So remember these are charged particles. So all group two metal ions, they have that plus two charge. But as we go down the group, remember the ionic radius actually gets bigger. We have more, um, we have more shells and we have a larger ionic radius. Um, now that plus two charge, if it's spread across a larger ion, then the charge density decreases. So it has it has less impact in terms of when it's near a carbonate or a nitrate. So for example, um, magnesium two plus, so there's your Mg two plus, it has a really high charge density. It's got a plus two charge, but it's quite small in comparison to barium, which also has a two plus charge, but the uh, the size of the ion is much bigger. So that charge is having to be spread, spread around a larger area. Now, the impact of this is that magnesium 2 plus is a much greater um, attraction of the electrons that exist in the carbonate. So the electrons that kind of sit in the orbitals of the carbonate ion are kind of dragged and distorted across closer to this quite powerful um, 2 plus charge. Whereas with barium, because it's spread out a little bit more, the density is lower. And so therefore, the distortion of the electron cloud and the carbonate ion is not as great and so therefore it doesn't really distort that much so obviously the less distortion we have as well the more stable the carbonate is so obviously this barium carbonate is much more stable than say magnesium carbonate so it's all about the charge density and we need to be talking about distortion of the electron cloud in the in the carbonate ion here so they're really important points that we need to be making Okay, so we can test the thermal stability um, experimentally, um, and it's the thermal stability obviously of nitrates and carbonates. So if we look at nitrates first, um, so we can measure how long it takes a specific amount of oxygen, um, or takes a specific, amount, a specific amount of oxygen is produced using a gas syringe, um, or the amount needed to relight a glowing splint. Because remember, with nitrates, you produce oxygen as one of the one of the products when you thermally decompose it. Um, obviously, the length of time it takes until a specific amount of NO2 is produced. Um, we could look at that as well. So NO2 is a brown gas, um, so it can easily be observed. We can see that. We must do this in a fume covered though. Um, nitrogen dioxide is toxic. Um, it shouldn't be breathed in. So really, if we're doing this experiment, it needs to be done in a fume covered. And for carbonates, um, we can um, effectively measure this by looking at the length of time it takes until a specific amount of CO2 is produced. Um, now, CO2 turns lime water cloudy, so the quicker this turns cloudy, the more carbon dioxide produced. We can, of course, use a gas syringe, which we can measure obviously quantitatively how much gas we're producing. Now, something that's really stable for either of these will produce... Um, a smaller amount of the gases that we're looking for. Something that's less stable will obviously produce um, carbon dioxide much quicker or it'll produce 
um, nitrogen dioxide quicker or oxygen quicker for the nitrates. So really we're looking at the rate at which we're producing products and, and the stability of them. Okay, and that's it. I told you it was very short. Like I say, there's a lot of overlap with year one chemistry. Um, so don't be surprised if you look at that thing. And I thought we kind of looked at this in year one. You you will have done. There's just the added bit about the kind of stability and, and kind of um, measuring that stability and looking at enthalpy of hydration. So kind of puts it into a little bit more context. Um, like I say, the full range of all the topics for CIE chemistry is available on Allery Chemistry YouTube channel. Please hit the subscribe button um, just to show your support. That would be absolutely fantastic. And like I say, these um, slides are available. They're all bundled up into topics. Um, so the bundles of topics, I suppose, that are available to purchase from Allery, um, from, yeah, Allery Chemistry. So it's from the test shop. Uh, click on the link in the description box and you'll be able to get a hold of them there. Like I say, they're great for revision or supplementing your notes as well. Um, like I say, that's it. Hope that helps. Bye.